Hi, good, good morning. My name is Dr. Raja Adnan Ahmed, and I am trying to make a series of uh, commonly asked interview questions which uh, the IMGs may face uh, in an NHS interview. And one of the very common questions which IMG may face is about uh, an acutely unwell patient, you know, how to deal with it. So I thought it would be better for me to get a medical registrar, and I'm very thankful for Dr. Abbasi to, to join me. Uh, Dr. Abdullah Abbasi is ST5 in uh, gastroenterology and working as a medical registrar. So I think he would be in the best position to answer this. So Abdullah, if you are asked about an acutely unwell patient and management of that, you know, how have you seen this question coming up in the interview and how do you deal with it? Um, so thank you, Adnan Bhai, first of all, for inviting me um, and for taking this initiative. As always, I'm sure people would greatly appreciate it. Um, as you said, it's a very frequently asked question and um, it, it can be asked in different ways. I think there are two dimensions to this question. Um, first of all, when they say acutely unwell patient, they are not going to phrase it that patient is acutely unwell. They can say that you have got a patient who is coming in with chest pain or your patient, if it's a surgical interview, who's coming with acute pain in the abdomen. So, so it, they can phrase it like a symptom. Um, and then you have to negotiate it. Um, so this is one part. Um, and then this, you can clearly appreciate that the patient is unwell, but the patient can communicate to you. The patient can talk to you. There is another kind of question where they can say that a patient has collapsed all of a sudden um, or the patient had a cardiac arrest. Um, and that's a different scenario altogether. So first, let's talk about um, if someone is acutely unwell. So if you have got a question where they say someone is coming with chest pain, you approach that question <clears throat> by saying that the first of all, um, I'll make sure that my patient is safe. Um, and I will start by doing uh, or taking a brief history. So in that history, you ask them about their pain. When did it start? Very brief and very focused. Um, and then you ask about past medical history, their medication, um, any relevant social history and any allergy. So very brief and focused. Um, and then you do a very quick systematic examination. And, and people usually say, though, I'm just going to do a chest examination or I'm going to do a respiratory examination or cardiovascular examination. I think a better way to phrase this question is I'm going to do a respiratory examination. I'm primarily looking for any crackles or any evidence of, let's say, fluid overload or infection. I'm doing a cardiovascular examination, feeling for pulse. Um, looking for pulse rate, rhythm, listening to the heart sound, listening for any added sounds. Um, so, so that's how you do a brief clinical examination. Um, and then you say that based on this, I will. So in, in a lot of interviews, they will let you continue with this. In some interviews, they will say, okay, so you have done this. What are your differential at the moment? Or they might give you an ECG or a blood gas or, or something to help you narrow down those things. So let's say if they show an ECG, which should include my current function, you can say that based on that history and this ECG, my most likely differential um, is acute myocardial infarction. And then you give them a differential plan. Um, in the differential plan, um, you don't win to be a hero. Uh, you manage the patient immediately. Um, and then you escalate the care to your seniors because that will be expected from you. They would not be expecting you to you know do very advanced procedures or go over the top. It, it would be a basic question where you manage the patient basically and escalate it to a specialty or your, your senior. So that is that is the question where patient is acutely unwell, but they say oh, the patient is shortness of breath or chest pain or one of these scenarios. That's one question. Now, usually they don't ask about specifically cardiac arrest because that's your ALS and it's a different algorithm altogether. But if they say that, um, patient has collapsed in front of you or a patient has got low GCS. Now in those situations, unfortunately, the patient can't talk to you. So to approach that side is a bit different. So you say that I will approach by doing A, B, C, D, E. Um, and then you're expected to go in detail of what you will say in A. So in A, um, you are to make sure that the airway is patent, patient is breathing on their own, no added sounds. Um, on B, you listen to their breathing pattern, um, respiratory rate, listen to their chest circulation, look at their pulse, blood pressure. So, so you do a stepwise A, B, C, D approach that I'm sure all IMGs are aware of. 
um but these are the two type of question just just to give an example when i did my first trust grid interview and exactly the same scenario they said that you have got a 72 year old gentleman who is acutely unwell and coming in shortness of breath so i went through the same brief history the gentleman was actively smoker but they, you are only going to get that information when you ask the right questions and then i say i will do some routine investigation bedside investigation arterial blood gas then they gave me an arterial blood gas um, which showed type 2 respiratory failure so they said how are you going to manage i gave them a brief medical management they said okay after one hour this is not getting better what are your thoughts and then i said i will start thinking of niv i will start also thinking if this gentleman is um suitable for a respiratory ward and they say also every single patient that you are going to get for an iv every single copd patient you are going to take the for an iv i said no you have to look at the functional status co morbidities and see if they are candidate for intensive care what's your escalation plan and 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 that was the end of the question so so it's very much a systematic approach because in this question as you can appreciate that they are able to see your history taking they are able to see your management they are able to see your knowledge and they are able to see your safety so they can judge all those things by asking one simple question but you need to show all these things within your answer in a proper structured way which you can easily practice as well beforehand but have a very structured approach with all this and abilla um, thank you very much for such a, a detailed answer what about the scenarios you have commonly seen you mentioned am i uh, and in a surgical interview acute abdomen um, and i have can tell you that in in psychiatry uh, cell form is one of the common things that you get but from the medicine point of view what sort of scenarios um, you have seen commonly coming up in the interview so in in my opinion i think that is very much tailored to the job that you're getting in a cardiology interview the chances of you getting a myocardial infarction or an acute heart failure are high um if you are going for a renal job acute renal injury um or um someone who's on dialysis and getting unwell or hyperkalemia is high usually um in a lot of places now um if you have got a myocardial infarction or if you have got a patient with stroke they are taken by specialists right from the very word go um so the things that are left for general medicine interview mostly is copd um asthma um pneumonia um gastrointestinal bleeding um so these are sort of common scenarios that you get um on a general medical interview but if you're going for a specialist interview so as for surgery orthopedics just look for the common scenarios and as i said they're very very common um someone once recommended me to read um the management um from the oxford handbook so on the back of the oxford handbook you have got a um, few um scenarios there to be honest they, they they've got a lot of management there but those are the just as topics wise that's usually good sign posting to say that those are the common scenarios that you can get in an interview and during the covid era you know uh, i'm sure some other scenarios may have sort of uh, come up as well is there anything to, related to covid that you would recommend that people should read on um so with that's that's a very um good question i think with um covid the first and foremost thing um to know about is safety um and that is approach towards ppe um so every trust has got a different ppe guideline these days so i think it will be it will be reasonable to say that um i will make sure that when so let's say if you have got these days if you have got a scenario with someone who's young and coming with shortness of breath um you always keep um covid as your differential so approach it exactly the same way but say that with the current circumstances i'll make sure that i'm wearing appropriate ppe when i approach the patient go through the same approach history examination and if then on the basis of examination or history you are suspecting that it is covid so you say that one of the top differential that i would have is covid pneumonitis um and th- there are two main agreed treatment plans in nhs at the moment one is oxygenation second is steroids and then there are more specialized things that come in but then they can be dealt by your respiratory colleagues or other specialist colleagues once patients get admitted so you can you can you can see that oxygenation arterial blood gas and then escalate it accordingly if you think their oxygenation is fine and you give them steroid escalate to your registrar or consultant and they will give rest of the management plan if they are on 15 liters oxygen or you feel their oxygenation level is quite high that you're not managing 
then you say that I will certainly consider this patient for intensive care and either try to get hold of my registrar to speak to intensive care or I will give a ring to intensive care. So with COVID, because the things are so fluid and evidence keeps on changing and you've got new drugs coming, I don't think they're going to go in that much detail, but basic approach, PPE, steroids, um, and, and oxygenation and escalation plan is something that you should be aware of. Yeah, I think I agree with you that when you are going for a specific job, you can read the uh, specific emergencies that can uh, happen in, the, in that particular specialty. And that, that will mostly cover the, uh, the clinical question in the interview. So thank you very much, Abdullah, for joining me and giving us this insight. I'm sure a lot of IMGs will find this uh, beneficial. No problem. Thank you very much for inviting me.